My name, well, David Bizdell. And who am I? Well, I'm an older gay man. Um, I'm having a hard time, I guess, making that transition to, from being young to being old. When I'm dreaming, I'm young. In my dreams, I'm young. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? I see an old man. I see somebody that I didn't want to become. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm, what I'm afraid of is the time from now until the time that I do die. Um, and the way I see it right now, uh, going into a senior's home, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy and it doesn't, it's, it's not going to be any fun. I mean, do you worry that people might treat you differently because you're gay? I do. And I think it uh, would be unjustified. What is the worry? Isolation. That they won't accept me. Imagine feeling that at the end of your life. Now, one of the problems, and seniors will tell you this, is that you become more and more invisible as you age. That's why Leslie Lee Cam does whatever she can to be seen. I'm a very proud queer dyke, as you can see. I wear my dyke t-shirt proudly. And this is my buddy, Lily, who goes everywhere with me, especially, I want to show you, on the dance floor. <laughs> Leslie is a youthful 64. And one of the things Lily, her cane, does for her is remind Leslie of the time she spent in a Toronto rehab hospital a couple of years ago. This one nurse came in and said to me, look at you, you're a mess. It's bad enough that you're one of those, and now I have to come and clean you up. And it was humiliating because I had no control and I had to totally depend on her. And for the whole time she was cleaning me, she kept making homophobic remarks. She kept saying, you know, you, you don't have a husband, you don't have children, where do you think you're gonna go in life? It's, it's bringing tears to my eyes just thinking about it. If I'm there for good health care, it shouldn't matter who I am, right? What my sexual orientation is. That shouldn't matter when you're providing me health care. Listening to Leslie, I can't help but wonder why aren't LGBT seniors protesting? Well, Leslie points out that it wasn't until 1969 that it was even legal to be gay in this country. So if you're 70 years old today, you remember that. Many of us are afraid because we have been so stigmatized for so many years at this age, those of us who are 55 and 60 plus are still afraid to speak out. We are people just like everybody else, but we have led such stressful lives and some of us still do. We don't have the support systems that straight seniors have in place. And that's why we are going back into the closet. After struggling to come out, LGBT seniors get to the end of their lives and face a horrible choice. We are having to decide whether we want to come out and be our whole selves or we want to get good health care. Would you ever go back into the closet? Never. <laughs> Never. Nope. It's going to be a fight to the end. But here's the thing. Leslie's not fighting by herself. Over the years, many of people in our LGBT community have been wounded. They've been wounded because they've been discriminated against. That's Brian Hobbs. He's 69, retired. And his passion today is to make people aware of the discrimination that LGBT seniors face going into care. Everyone in this seminar either works or volunteers with seniors. They might feel threatened to come here and be part of things. Or and they might hide. They might pretend to be straight and they're not. The reason Brian does this is deeply personal. And it actually starts way back in high school, when he was left to eat alone in the cafeteria every day. Nobody looked at me, not even the teachers. They'd walk past, and it's like I didn't exist. What if the same thing happened in a residence? What if people didn't welcome me at their table? What if I was the one who sat alone at a table in the corner of the room at 79? So that happened to me when I was a teenager, but I sure don't want it to happen again when I'm a senior and in care. In the seminar, to help workers understand that fear, 
Brian uses an anecdote that happened just a few months ago. I had some friends who were a, a, an elderly gay couple around 80 years old, and eventually one of them became ill and had to be placed in a, a long-term care facility. And one of the things they asked me was that, you know, could you stand in the doorway? And if a personal service worker or a nurse would go by, signal us. Because we don't want to be seen holding hands or embracing, you know, on the bed. Because they were afraid if the nurses caught them doing that, they would discriminate against them. People sometimes say to us, okay, so what do you gays want? And what we want is to be treated with the same dignity and respect and kindness that is accorded to everybody else. Nothing more than that, but nothing less. So thank you for listening. Brian's hope is pretty simple, that LGBT seniors can be whoever they want to be when they go into long-term care. Would you ever go back into the closet? No. I'd, ju I'd just be who I am. I'm not flamboyant. I'm not, uh, I'm not one that I, I don't think I'm one that you can pick out on the street and say, he, there's a, he's a fag. You know, I, just, I just feel normal, except because I'm gay. Mm -hmm. The seniors who are facing what David's up against are the same seniors who fought for gay rights for all generations. It seems only fair they should live how they want in their final years. Nick Purden, CBC News, Toronto. And this issue may only get bigger as more baby boomers reach retirement age. Within the next 20 years, people 65 or older could make up to a quarter of Canada's population. And because people in that age group are more susceptible to chronic diseases, it is expected to put huge pressure on an already stressed healthcare system.